uh, we had this event that we will be discussing i mean expecting that uh, the following topics like majorly i'm ri roughly writing those topics like css units you might have gone through from the resource video right after that uh, there was something like uh, display uh, properties display was i think it was straightforward like inline block and etc right uh, display was straightforward so i might not be able to discuss it in case you have any specific problems with display then you can tell me because i don't believe the display property needs a specific discussion uh, after that we can talk about something which was uh, about the position property which was you something which you might have faced issues with and uh, yeah i believe that should be the issue right that that should be most of the things uh, that we have to talk anything else that you want to know from the last class anything else you want to have a discussion on okay in case you feel like having anything else uh, then please tell me i'll, I'll uh, talk about that also and then we can talk about the agenda for today is basically flex boxes and certain properties around it and we can also briefly discuss about grids grids is not something that we'll focus much upon because grid i assume that you know if you know flex box well enough then you don't need to necessarily talk about grids okay how grid works and etc it is just something that you can take as an optional thing that okay if you know grids uh, if you know flexbox knowing grid could be a better option no, knowing grid will be slightly better but it's not something which is uh, mandatory for you to learn grid in your starting period at least so let's just start with css unit first of all and uh, with css units the very first discussion that goes is there are two main type of categorization that we can do with css units the first type of uh, unit will be a uh, absolute unit in absolute unit, we can have things like uh, pixels, we can have things like picas, and we can have things like pt, right? These tools are very, you know, rarely used and we general, generally don't use them as such. But pixel is something that is used very frequently, right? So this is something which is sort of very commonly used. Now, how does a pixel work? And I hope that you've already got an idea that it's just like an absolute unit. It's just like something like centimeters, millimeters, which is going to remain constant across all the screens. Up kidney body screen, 18 pixel is going to be 18 pixel in that way, right? And that is something about absolute units. I don't think anyone has any problem with absolute units as such because these are such units only, right? These are just normal units only. The problem might arise when we talk about something like relative units, right? In relative units, how does things work is that we have the following type of relative units we have something like EM, we have REM. We have VH, we have VW, we have, uh, I think, percentage is also something that is also very, very commonly used. The discussion circle around that, okay, where we should be using percentage, where we should be using EM, where we should be using REM, and maybe what exactly is the difference between all of them. Although I'm assuming that from the last resource video, if you have gone through that in a very uh, phased amount of manner, in a very, you know, um, in a very, what do you say, you have allotted some time to it you might have understood it but still let's clear out the doubts i'll not you know go into the depth of the complete discussion i'll just quickly summarize it for you right because if i'll again go back to some you know if i'll again go back to uh, you know depth the depth of all of these topics then we'll not be able to cover the today's agenda so yeah so what happens is that these are relative units that means that it is in relation to something else that you are comparing it is not something which is fixed maybe with different screen sizes or maybe with different parent element or maybe with different container element whatever it is right it is going to change it is it is bound to change so these are something like relative units now percentage is the simplest one let's let's start with percentage only percentage is always in comparison to your parent right in comparison to your parent to your parent or to the current parent whatever right that simply means that suppose you are saying that i am having an outer box suppose let's just imagine here that I'm talking about, I'm having an outer division. I'm having a division, uh, this, which has a height and width of maybe 100, 100 pixels. So if I have 100 pixel into 100 pixel, right, and I want the inner box to be of, and I've given the inner height and width to be of maybe 20%, right, 20% of that, right. So what will that mean? Can't we just simply say that, okay, 20% of 100 is what? I think that's, uh, you know, 20 pixel, right? So we can say, uh, the inner box will have 20 cross 20 uh, pixels ka size now, this is what 20% uh, uh, of, of of the parent container will mean right? it's very simple if the 
parent container will change if the height will increase the inner containers height will also accordingly increase that's the simplest thing about percentage now if percentage is clear right you can also start talking about we can also start talking about em and rem right because it might look that it might look like that percentage is very very similar to em and it's very very similar to rem but it is slightly not how is that what em and what rem are used for these are also used for relative units em simply signifies that suppose you have a parent element and you want to give the font sizes you want to give the sizes of the children right according to the parents font size then in that case you will use an em right em means whatever you are comparing you are comparing to the size font size of the parent container right if the parent container is having maybe font size of 20 pixel so if you say 10 uh, if you say 1 rem right one sorry 1 em 1 em will mean that okay it will also have uh, same type of things let me just quickly do the same thing let me just quickly bring it down here because that will make things much more clear um oops, uh i think it's just one second yeah this one so i'll open this css folder in my vs code now <clears throat> right and where will i start i'll start with something like units right i'll say units.html and then i'll also say uh, units.css let's just quickly do this i'll quickly show you the examples and you're having a division uh, and maybe you can give this let me yeah you can give it a class of um, you know outer or you can give it a class of parent and inside that you can have a division and you can give it a class of uh, children or child right and suppose you are going into your css now you'll go into your css i'll open that side by side uh sorry link and that's good and then i can say yeah now i can go to dot parent and i can say font size of that is maybe 20 pixels right and then i go inside my children inside my child and i'll say the font size of this is maybe one rem right so even if i write any single word here i'll write lorem five and i open it in my vs code i mean i open it in my live server sorry not this if i open this in the okay uh we should be okay yeah. by default this uh, index.html is getting open i don't want that index.html to be open and maybe okay the style sorry index.html is not opening the style of this different thing was getting into it now that's fine so i'll open it up for you and i'll just show you this one thing which i wanted to highlight is that if you just hover over this thing right if you just hover over this and if you also plan to see this right so can you see what is the exact uh, uh, you know what is the font size of the children right the font size of the children is something like um where is it where is it written the font size of this is 16 pixel can you see it just just try to notice that below color there is something written as font and then it says 16 pixels can you see this yes right it says 16 pixel the first thing is maybe i have over zoomed in oh, sorry not this that looks fine to me yeah so i told you right i might have zoomed it a lot that's why the 16 pixel was looking too much but now if i just uh, go it uh, go over it once again you can see it still has 16 pixels of uh, you know it's, it still has 16 pixels of uh, what do you say uh, one second just just one second i believe uh, parent is written that's good uh, one rem that's good right Achha, i've used rem sorry shit uh, that's why i was thinking why it is showing 16 pixel and why not 20 pixel yeah let's let's talk about it once again right when i when i hover through it can you see it it says 20 pixels right why does it say it's 20 pixel now because i've said one em em means whatever is its parent just borrow the same uh font size from the parent that is what is em right and suppose i i want twice the uh you know twice the uh font size of the parent what i will do i'll write two em right and if i hover through it can you see it it says 40 pixels now can you see it why 40 pixels because two times of 20 is happening and that's why it says 40 pixels that's it exactly right now if this is how em works right whatever is the parent ka font size it will uh, act accordingly to this parent's font size the second thing that we talk about is is rem now now what is this rem rem is simply like in corresponding to the root of your uh, you know page in your root element we talk about and what is your root element 
your root element is html always so by default the size of the uh, you know the by default the size of your root element is 16 pixel only that's why when i say 2 rem so it will be twice the 16 pixel which will be 32 pixels here if i go here you'll be able to see that it is equal to 32 pixels now and that is what is the difference between em and rem right em is always corresponding to its parent and rem is always corresponding to the root and root has a by default uh, you know uh, root has a by default uh, size of 16 pixels so that says that's how you can change uh, that's how we can work around with it and sometimes maybe you want to have customization and you don't feel like one rem should be only equals to 16 pixels so what you can do directly is you can go to your root element and you can call, you can just change the font size and you can say maybe from now time from now onwards my one rem will be equals to 30 pixels now let's just say it, right that one rem will be equal to 30 pixels now so when i say two rem here what will that correspond to can you see it it says 60 pixels now can you can you can you see it it's a 16 pixel times right why is it happening why i have just altered how i have just altered it i just altered it by changing the font size of html and which i just you know uh, influence later on yes that is about how em and rem are different to each other there is a confusion that people say that okay em and percentage are exactly the same right maybe both are referencing to the parent so no that is not how it works Percentage is always corresponding to the maybe whatever parent uh, ka height width or whatever we have given, right? If you are saying uh, 100, uh, if I say width equals to 10%, it will say whatever is the width available to the parent, it will take 10% of that, right? If I say height equals to 10%, whatever is the height available to the parent, it will take 10% of that height. But EM is always corresponding to the font size of the parent that we are talking about, right? It's not about height, it's not about width, it's not about any other thing. It's always about the font size of the parent. So that's how EM and percentage are particularly different to each other. And REM and EM, though, obviously, they are diff quite different to each other. Uh, what will be EM size if we don't get the font size of the parent? Uh, whatever is the, you know, by default size, it's 16 pixel, I believe, right? So whatever Joby by default parent ka hoga, wohi, uh, will be the, you know, will be the uh, children's size. Uh, how to choose the parent? Uh, see, it's not like you will choose your own parent, but it's something like how your parent, how your component or how your element is, uh, you know, is, is placed. Right now, you can see that this division is enclosed by another division, which was this parent division. Although I have given them intentional names of children and parent, but yeah, this is what you have done it right now. So that's how it is going to resonate or that is how it is going to borrow some property from the parent. And maybe if you don't have any parent here right it will directly then go back to the body as the parent it will assume that body is my parent now and then they'll borrow the properties from body directly see e e rem it's very simple right it is always corresponding to the root element root is your html element and since html has a by default size of 16 pixel so whenever you write one rem that means 16 pixel when you write 2.5 rem it will be 2.5 times 16 pixel it's not that that anything is necessary i mean you can totally avoid using em you can totally avoid using rem but when we'll talk about responsive designs having to use more of relative units will be better uh, option than using more of absolute units nobody will recommend you using more about more of those absolute units because they are not so easy right when we move around different devices suppose i'm opening your web page on a you know, uh, I'm opening your web page on a smaller scale uh, on a small screen, right? And you have given font size to be 30 pixels. So 30 pixels in a mobile device is a very huge font, right? You can even see 30 pixel in my browser looks like a massive style to me, although it's 60 pixel, but yeah. So that you would not want to have styles like this. You want that, okay, if the uh, containers are shrinking, if the width is shrinking, my height and width should automatically shrink. My font size should automatically shrink. So for that thing, relative units are something that you should prefer. How to use div main section tags in um, Prashant? We have talked about that in semantics. If you, uh, you know, if or maybe we have talked that you can explore that particular thing that how you can use a main, how you can use section tags. These are just a, like a wrapper, right? It's not that using a section tag will make you any different or they'll, you know, enhance the whole uh, tag for you. It's just like a wrapper uh, that is there and that's why it is a semantic tag percentage anushka it's uh, straightforward right that percentage means whatever percent of the parent that you want to take 
suppose i am saying height equals to 10% and the parent is having a height of 100 pixels so what will be the height of the children that simply will be 10 pixels yeah uh, provide by web designer uh, no it's not something these are provided by web designer but these are something that which css and html is offering us right and uh, when we were, when we create our front end when we create this type of designs and we create layouts right we have to create this i mean we can create this uh, using html and css and that's what we have to follow i hope now it is correct uh, now it is clear to all of you all right so we have had a talk about sorry one second yeah we have had a discussion about this all these things right now let's just quickly move about the display properties uh, sorry about the position properties right because some of you have also asked about it so how does this position property works let me just clear all of this or comment out all of this how does this work is maybe i'll just simply say uh or, or just i let me uncomment all of this and let me just say that right now i'm saying my parent has um a background color of anything like this then i want to have things like height and width i want to have a height of 100 pixel width should also be equal to 100 pixel then my children is having a background color also of um, something like this and it is having a height and width of maybe uh, 50 pixels just one second so with a position property, there are multiple properties that we have. Yeah, there are multiple properties that we have with position properties. Let me first of all list down all of them and then we will have a discussion on that particular thing. So what all different type of display properties we have? Uh, position properties. In position property, the first property we have is called as uh, absolute property, right? That's the very simplest one, right? Yet many people get confused about it. So absolute property means that suppose you are having a children inside another children, the same discussion I'll take, the same example I will borrow, that you are having a children, you are having a parent, and the children, or let's just assume this is your whole web page only. This is your web page, this is your parent, and this is your children. Right? This is your children. So maybe you want to have the position of the children according to the parent container right means that suppose uh, you want that okay the children container should even come at center of your page center of the parent container or it should maintain a difference of maybe 10 pixel from top and 10 pixel from left hand side assume that this is 10 pixel from top and bottom and this is uh, from top and this is 10 pixel from left and left side right so if i if i want to plan things in such a way that what i can do is i can use this position property of absolute now and how will it this position property of absolute will help me absolute property will always help me to position the element which i want to place according to its first parent positioned element that means whatever is its parent and whatever is its first parent right jo iska pehla parent hai whatever is its first parent right and whatever is the positioned element right what do we mean by positioned element by positioned element i mean that the parent should also have a position property it should not be like that parent is not having any type of uh, uh it's not having any type of property right any type of position property in case your parent is not having any type of parent uh, position property then it will look out for further parents that okay maybe you don't have any positional property let me look out for other parents that i have maybe they might have the position properties even if another child another parent let's assume that there is another container outside here even if this other container does not have the parent po uh, position property it is also not going to uh, plan accordingly to the this container what it will eventually do if it will not be able to find any parent with the position property then it will follow according to the browser or the web page means that if none of the parent had any position property ye browser ke se ja ke attach ho now the final position of the element will look something like this this will be the final position of the element why because according to it the very first parent position that it found was this browser only and now it is maintaining a gap of 10 pixel from left and right uh, from left and 10 pixel from top and that is what is absolute property that if you want to pay if you want to position the children 
according to a parent, you have to use a absolute property. I hope you have seen this example uh, in the resource video. Have you seen this example, like how uh, you know this absolute property works and how it's all not always according to the browser, and it uh, it is according to the parent parent container. Uh, what if I want to pass the parent value and take the e root value of the percentage or like em? Uh, so, Mantha, I didn't get your question. If you can elaborate this. Yes, I'll let just, uh, you know, show you an example of working of absolute uh, property. I thought I've, you know, discussed this in the resource video. Oh, achha, we have not talked about VH and VW, right? VH and VW is basically for uh, viewport height and viewport width, right? Viewport height is whatever is the visible area available to you, whatever is the area available for your web page, right? For our web page, usually the area available is from this starting from this area till this particular last plus this, this area, right? And width is starting from this left corner up to this rightmost corner. So viewport height will mean that from top till the viewport area is available, that is the height of this. So it is also like if you want to take 100% of the height of this, you'll say 100 VH. If you want to take 10% of that, you'll say 10 VH. If you want to take 75% of the height, you'll say 75 VH. Similar will happen with the width also. VH and VW is that way. I am talking about the resource video that was shared with you uh, before joining this class. I think yesterday it was, you must have received a video on your dashboards. Yes. And I think we have talked about this multi i am just about to show you just one second prajwal uh, that one more thing i think we have discussed is that please uh, you have to go through the videos before joining the next uh, session because these things are connected to each other let me just quickly show you an example of uh, this uh, what do you say absolute property so what i'm going to do now is maybe i'm just going to maybe let me create this box slightly bigger let's just say that this is 500 pixel and uh, this is height and width both are 500 pixel and let's just say that the height of the box is 100 pixel now and width is also 100 pixel let's give some bright colors here let's say red color only i'm going to give now that looks fine right so now i want to do one thing i want to maybe place this red container right uh with a gap of 10 pixels from left side or 10 pixel will be too less let's say 50 pixel from left and 50 pixel from right side uh, from top side so there is another property that we do use and these are called as offset properties with offset properties what do we mean Offset property means that it is the coordinate that we are giving. So we can say position equals to absolute I'm going to give. And I'm going to say, uh, you know, top say I want to maintain maybe 50 pixel ka gap. Similarly, I want to maintain left say I want to maintain 50 pixel ka gap. So if I so if I do so, you might be thinking, okay, now it's, uh, man, it's maintaining a gap from the parent uh, element, right? This is what you might be thinking, right? But let me just show you one simple thing. Maybe I'll just give a margin of uh let's just say uh let's just say 200 pixel to this parent element now now can you see what what just happened do you think that this red box was getting aligned according to the parent now do you think that this is getting aligned to it now no i don't think because the parent was not at all positioned can you see that if the parent has any position properties here no it didn't have any position property so I'll just do simple one simple. I, I'll just do one simple thing. I'll just maybe put the position of relative or whatever position I'll just print and you'll be able to see the difference just by making a position property of the parent, right? This red box has suddenly started behaving according to the parent position, now, according to the parent container. Now, Ab main parent container ko kitna bhi move karo, kuch bhi karo, the red box will always move according with the parent position, uh, with the parent element. Parent element jaha jaha move karega, the red box will accordingly move. Why? Because now this children is now having a position according to its parent container right uh, for example i want em value to be based on the root but not its parent let's say i have division and it has a child component so if i want to use em it will take the division value but uh see I, I don't think like if the option is available to you you'll unnecessarily uh, have to complicate it but uh, if you can directly reference to the root by using rem but, but why would you still want to reference it with em so i don't think like that's a uh, you know uh and 
honestly i don't have an idea like oh, if that is even possible that you whatever you are trying to ask but i think the options are is available to you right if you want to re if reference to the root then you can directly use rem why would I have to unnecessarily reference to em to relate to the root yeah uh, what is the best practice for font size uh, it depends again uh, i cannot say that every time it has to be em every time it has to be rem or every time it has to be pixel it depends upon scenarios to scenarios, right? Sometimes maybe you are having a nested development where the container of the, the size of the parent container could vary. It could be larger, it could be smaller. And you want the size of the inner container to be according to that. Or maybe you want the font size of the inner container according to that. So for that, EM is the best to suit. For the situation where you'll think that, okay, my font, my screen is going to change a lot of times. So I can write multiple media queries to say that if the screen size will drop, all the font should just get decreased by this much length or all the font should get decreased by this much intensity so for that what you can do you can directly say if the screen size dropped between this and that just change the html ka element just change the root element if the root element is changed every other element will directly change in the page without having to unnecessarily do all the different changes agar aapne root ko change kar diya to jao bhi sare baki elements hai, since they were uh, they were dependent on rem they were dependent on root so all the others will also change accordingly so yeah, we have just talked about um, what we have just talked about the display property and uh, display. Sorry, we have just talked about the position property and in, in position property, we have talked about absolute. now. So I hope absolute ka example is also very, very clear to you. And I don't think there is any problem. Yeah, perfect. Let's just quickly talk about relative and the other properties because for the after that, we have to also talk about, uh, you know, uh, we have to talk about uh, what uh, flexbox that is also an important part of discussion so yeah position that is clear uh, the next type of position that we will talk about is something called as uh, is something called as relative uh, positions in relative relative is very very simple right relative position means that whatever was its original position how you want to move it according to uh, its original position so relative is that only i don't think we have to even do a, a you know uh, we do even require a uh, demonstration of that it will be very simple suppose i'll say that i have placed multiple boxes i have placed three boxes and these boxes are placed like this manner only assuming that three boxes are placed we have been placed in this manner i want the second box to slightly move to the right hand side and the position of the box should get this i want the box to move to the right hand side now i want it to maintain a gap from the original position so one thing that you can do, you can directly say, okay, I can do a margin or I can do this and that and that. Margin paddings, everything is different thing, but I just want to move it to slightly on the right hand side. I just want to move it slightly on the top and bottom side. So for that, if you want to do that using position, what you can do, you can say the position equals to relative, position equals to relative. And then you can say left equals to, left has to be what? Maybe 20 pixel you want to move. So you'll say 20 pixel. Then it will maintain a difference of 20 pixel from left hand side now right this is how relative position works how is top left uh different from margin left hand? see it's it's totally totally different right margin and top and these things are totally different margin will maintain a gap uh in in a way and top left and these things will give like a coordinate right so it, it's just like saying that okay can you please maintain a distance of uh, you know, can you please maintain a distance of 10 centimeters? That is the one way of saying when you say margin of 10 centimeter or 10 pixel. And can you please move to the right hand side by 10 steps or by 10 centimeter? This is what when we this is what it means when we say left equals to 10 pixels, right? So they both are different. How to know when to use? Uh, see, it will. Uh, it's not something that I can answer right now. Right? When to use uh, relative? When to use absolute? When we will talk more about responsivity in the upcoming class, then you'll get a better idea that okay, when to use relative and when to get when to use absolute. But try to use more of the relative units because it's much easier and it's much flexible to work with relative units than to then compared with absolutes. Okay, so that is about relative and uh, there is another property that says uh, there is another position property that goes by the name of uh, uh, absolute property. So how does, sorry, absolute was already done. There was something called as, there is something called as fixed property. So fixed means that whatever position you have given, whatever offset positions you have given, it is going to stick to that position, that's it. 
even if you scroll the page even if you you know uh, you know if the content is overloading or anything overflowing it is still going to fix to that position this is what a fixed position means right again i'm not giving example because that is very straightforward and i hope you have gone through the same example with uh, you know in your uh, resource video and that would have clarified it after fix the second thing that we do is there is something called as uh, yeah sticky is also there sticky is slightly interesting because sticky is a combination of fixed and uh, you know and it behaves like a normal position suppose you are having this uh, box you might have seen it right you might have seen that in some web pages what happened that you have the scroll bar let me just maybe try to open bbc let's see that if it happens bbc dot in whatever it is bbc just let try it bbc only bbc.com right so in this particular thing you might see that right now it is just behaving like a scrollable okay the nav bar is not even stuck sticky here but sometimes what happened let me show you uh sticky example yeah so let me just show you this example in this you'll see that right now the yellow box that we have here right if i'll scroll my page can you see if i'm scrolling my page this this thing is scrolling very nicely right there is no problem uh, and it does not create any problem but as soon as i'll scroll up to a limit it will become sticky it will just get stick to a position and it will behave like a fixed position that is what is a sticky property and that is how it works right this is the difference between sticky and a fixed one a fixed one is always fixed even if you start scrolling it from the very first moment it will still be stuck there matlab ek coordinate aapne usko bata diya hai wo wahi coordinate pe rahega it will not move from there but sticky will mean that okay it will be scrollable it will be just behaving like a normal element up till a limit and after that it will just behave like a strict one okay yeah this is interesting like what is this webkit sticky so what happens is that this sticky property might not be available in some of the browsers right so for that particular thing we use these uh, you know webkit properties right that means if your browser is maybe not capable of using the sticky property sometime you will find that you have used all the correct properties but your browser is still not picking that property so for that thing we use these things right webkit uh, and this sticky property you can see that okay sticky is not working with browse uh, sticky is not working with chrome sticky is not working with safari what should i use you'll get the following uh, you know you will get the following things from the internet that you should be using this and it will start working with your browser now is it fine you have also got to know about sticky property right uh how to translate work with position i didn't get this question amit right i mean what exactly you want to you know know can you ex explain it can you elaborate it okay by the time you are explaining this uh, we can you know move towards the next pointers which is uh, talking about flex boxes right because this is very very in uh, interesting and important discussions to take that i'll try to explain this with certain scenarios that if you want to do something like this what all options you have and why using other options is not a good idea and why you should consider using flex boxes directly right so flex boxes kyun use karne chahiye why that using flex boxes is a better idea this is what we are about to just discuss now so uh, just one second uh, we again have a question how many ways are there to move a piece of um, again i'm not counting how many ways do we have but there are a lot of ways of uh actually moving a uh, you know piece of content some things like margin is one thing that you have seen uh, this position is also one thing and then there are cert certain things like translate and transform properties right uh, transform is the main property inside it we have things like translation and rotation and you know this and that and that so the main property that is i mean few properties that i'm able to recall are these three four pro properties let's just talk about flex boxes now right because that is an important point that we are yet to discuss and uh, it is it it might take certain amount of time because flex box is something that is very important part and that cannot be completed in one single class right and even if we can complete flex box in one single class it will require you to do a lot of practice with flex box right and i'm not saying that everything in flex boxes we will teach you and then only you can implement it the main pointers about using flex box or the main blocker about using flex box is people don't understand the terminologies that is associated with it like what when to use justify content property when to use align items property uh, how will i get to know that if i use the particular property where will it align my items right so we'll try to 
understand the fundamentals of flex boxes in this class first right and i will share with you one good resource right from where you can practice the following thing jo cheeze abhi tak aap kar rahe the wo sari cheeze aap practice bhi usi se kar paoge right and jo cheeze aap flex pe karoge and once you get to know all the basics and foundation of flex boxes then you will be very very ready to move ahead and to use flex boxes and to explore the other properties of flex boxes because trust me there are lots and lots of property on flex boxes which will make you confused about it and many people complain that why not all the properties have been discussed in class this property is also important this property is also important but we'll just take it in a uh, you know fees like step by step manner right okay next thing uh, yeah what we are just about to do is let's just assume that you want to create a photo gallery you want to create something like a photo gallery and how does a photo gallery look like a photo gallery does look like this you have your web page if you have this as your web page now assume this as your web page in this web page suppose you want to you know create two or three photos in one uh, single row and if you plan it like this way so how till the knowledge that you possess right uh, till this point whatever knowledge you possess if you want to place all these three different three four different uh, uh, you know boxes with equal distance from each other considering that you have a fixed amount of uh, browser now so how can you do it what what properties you have to use of css to actually make this happen uh translate see i mean this is used to you know um, move the boxes around uh, you know ar ar around uh, uh, i mean the property that you have just written here uh, the property you'll see it's generally used to make uh, it generally used to it's it's used in compare in association with other properties like you must have seen something written like top equals to uh, 50% and left equals to 50% if you if you are uh, you know asking this and if you use these three properties uh you know position equal to relative uh, top left and uh, 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 top 50 left 50 and then this property this will make your whole component or the whole uh, division to be centered on the page right the main thing that i want to tell you from here is translate is used to move the the box from its original position it's just translating in different position in different axis So if you put margin ten pixel, everything will move around and ten pixel. Yes, something like this. Exactly, exactly, exactly like this. Sir, how to align multiple division to our position of choice? Uh, okay. So first thing is like, how do you uh, want to you know position all of these at your choice? Maybe something like uh, you know something like maybe you have different uh, division and you want to place at equal distance to each other maybe you want to place all of them at the center of your page so that thing does matter because if you want to plan different if you want to arrange different boxes using a unified uh, you know using a unified plan this can be done using flex boxes that we are just discussing these are multiple divisions right and we want to position them according to our a unified plan that okay I'll place all the divisions equal distance from each other so this is what can be done using flex boxes if you are asking this or grid is also an option yes okay people already know about grids and people already know about uh, you know flex boxes that's why people are saying that we will probably use flex boxes and grid to give this particular alignment or to get, to get this particular layout but let's just assume that you do not know anything about grids and flex boxes now what are the options available to you the only options available to you will be that maybe you'll just give some margins right maybe you'll get just try to give some paddings here and margin top margin right and etc and then you'll somehow create a layout like this but do you think this is a feasible layout i don't think it is a feasible layout why because uh, even if you do it right so, suppose now i'll some suddenly change the requirement and i'll say now you don't have to place three boxes in one row you have to place four boxes in one row what you'll have to do you'll have to redo all the calculation and you have to find that okay the total width was maybe 100 or maybe 1000 pixel and i had distributed maybe you know 30 pixel 30 pixel as a margin now i'll have to redo the calculation and now i have to you know what now i have to just think of other number like it will be 20 or 30 something like this and the worst nightmare will be that if someone has resized your browser all of your margins and paddings will go away right there will be no point of doing that so that's not a good thing right so what would have been a better thing that there should be something like a flexible layout 
and flexible layout would have made things very very easy flexible layout will automatically judge that whatever is the total area available to you and whatever is the size of cards that you want to play and if you want to put equal distance with each other they'll equal distantly put three cards in one single row and even if you resize your window if you increase the window the space should automatically increase if you re i mean if you scale down your browser right the size will automatically shrink something like this should be the better idea right or even if you add another card right the space will automatically adjust itself this is like a magic right that automatically the space is automatically getting managed and the layout is getting updated we don't have to do the margins and paddings every time again and again right this is what we want to do position related flexible yes yes exactly exactly the same thing we will do uh, will top bottom left right and etc here kya when you use these things on uh, you know on elements you have to have a position property also right position property ke baad hi you will justify right ki from top this and that and that how does it work perfect so uh, but all four all four does i mean can also work there is no problem in uh, i mean logically if you think that there will be no such point of having if you are maintaining a gap of uh, 10 pixel from top right and if you are also saying i also want to maintain a 10 pixel from bottom right just a 10 pixel from top uh, and then maintaining 10 pixel from bottom is not logically making any sense but if you try to do it right it might work there is no limitation and then it will not throw any errors at least yeah uh, so that's one thing right now let's continue the discussion on flex boxes and uh, if this is a something that i've told you that this is something magical which flex box will give us the power let's just see how can we do that real magic in our code also and by the way flex boxes does stand for flexible boxes and flex boxes ka best use case is for creating layouts we have also told right layout is something that we will talk and you know we'll create the layouts of our application very intensively right when we'll move ahead into creating bigger application into creating bigger projects where we are not just creating a html heading we are not just creating a type table we are not just creating forms we are defining that this is going to be the area where the profile picture will come this is going to be the area where the main content will come this is the area where the navigation bar will come right so this all is a layout only how your content is going to be laid out on your page so for the layout purpose flex box is a must thing and how does a flex box work there are certain technical terminologies around flex boxes let's just discuss that first so the some technical concept that we talk about in a flex box is wherever you want to work with flex boxes jab jahan jahan pe aap flex box se kaam karna chahte ho right you should be having a defined area where you want to work with it right aapke paas ek defined area hona chahiye jahan pe aap us pe kaam karte so the area we generally call this and we say that this is a container area. where our flex box is going to be laid out this is the playground where we are going to play with flex boxes and this is what we are going to say it is our container right that is our container inside your container you can actually lay out the content right lay out the content bole do you can place those boxes and you can place those boxes in a any defined manner this is one defined manner that you have placed all the boxes across one single row across horizontal manner other way could be that you have the container again the container you have had and now you are planning this is also on a container and across the same container you are planning to put those boxes in a vertical manner right right now we are only talking about 1d one directional uh, flow of the containers we are not talking that okay how you can place the boxes in a ver vertical just one second yeah yeah so how you can place the uh, what i was saying yeah how you can place the boxes in one directional and two directional flow at once we are not talking about that right now although right if you plan to place the boxes in vertical manner or in horizontal manner some at a point uh, after a certain point right a moment will come when this row is completely filled what you will you do then then you'll place on you know then you can shift those containers 
then you can shift those containers to the next line you can say okay we were filling it like this way now the row is complete then we can start filling the other boxes from this particular manner right this is what you can do but still the direction of the flow of containers will still remain horizontal in this case horizontal or we can say it is a row wise manner right in this what we can say we can say the direction of the flow of boxes it is in the vertical manner it is in the vertical manner and it is also in the column wise manner whatever is the spelling of column right uh, column wise manner this is what we mean so there are two ways that we talk about and this is again i'm repeating this is a one directional flow that i'm talking about we have not talked about two directional that how we can also plan the content in the row wise and in a column wise manner in same container we are assuming that we are when we create a container we are only going to place the content either in a row wise manner or in a column wise manner but all these are fixed position but uh, what if the requirement uh, see if you are talking about if you are talking about the containers right this is not a fixed condition right now this is not a fixed position right this will automatically adapt itself yes uh difference between like uh, in actual functionality there is no difference between division and a section both of them are just going to act as a wrapper they are just going to act as a wrapper tag right and uh, no such difference as such and no no difference as such these are just uh, you know different semantic tags yeah so yeah let's continue with the same discussion that how will you plan it right how can you create those boxes and how can you arrange them accordingly so the very first thing that you have to do ever when you want to work with flex let me create a file for flex now i'll say that i'll say uh, i'll create a file with flex.html and i'll create a file with uh, flex.css for flex.html i'm going to create a basic document structure that's how it works right and uh, then i'm also going to link it with css and the link i'm going to place is this flex.css right and i'll just place them side by side and i'm saying going to say that i'm going to create a division right having a class of container and container is not a class that you always have to give but it is a convention that we follow that generally we talk that wherever we are going to create a flex container is the class that we will generally give again it's not a hard code thing that you have to do every time but it's by convention that we always call this by the name of container so i'm also using the name container perfect so container is created right and i just want to say that in my container i want to lay out different boxes i'm going to say all of them has a class of item right so i'm going to have three item and then i'm going to have a class name of item one um item two and item three right and what i'm going to do just give me one minute let me quickly complete the styling part uh, for you so that you don't have to focus much on it container i'll write then i'll write item class then i'll also write item dot item one sorry and similarly item two and item three item two and item three perfect right so what i will do is i'll just give a common class of height and width height equals to maybe uh let's just say 100 pixel width is also equal to 100 pixel and item one can just let's give a background color so that will be easy for us to understand let's just say it has a background color of blue item two has a background color of uh, let's just say it's equal to tomato and let's just say bg equals to not this background not border color background color it should be equal to something like uh, this get it right so i've created three boxes and this is how it is going to look like let's go back uh let's create uh, i mean let's open this new web page here and that's how it's looked like uh, that and that's how it is looking like right that looks like a sort of sorted manner but let's just try to bring the whole discussion of how Flexbox was working. So once I've done this, right, you can see it looks perfect to us now. It looks totally perfect to us now. But how can we plan those content, right? How can we lay out those boxes with equidistance? And how can we lay those boxes around vertical manner or around horizontal manner? So to do so, I'm just going to use one property. First of all, I'll just use one other property, right? I'll say container will have a height of 100 bh just so that we don't have any confusion. Width of 100 VH, uh, sorry, width of 100 VW, and 
I also want to don't I also don't want to have any margins here and there. So I'm going to say margin equals to zero and padding equals to zero. So whatever properties I have written, do you have any confusion when I have written all these properties? Like why I have written and let me also give a background color here. Let's just say background color is something very, very lightish. This this you, this you, whatever. So can you see that I just planned the whole stuff for you? I have not uh, left any spaces from left and right. I have not left any margins and padding so that it will not disturb with the current flow of containers. Now we can just simply learn the uh, uh, the flex boxes without any disturbance. Just quickly see through the HTML, just quickly see through the CSS that I have written. And please let me know if you find any difficulties in understanding why I have written this, why I have written that, and what is the purpose of following things. Any confusion you have? Everything is sorted, right? Nothing I've written is uh, off the context and everything is making sense. One thing I'll just explicitly explain that why I have given height and width to be 100 bh and 100 bw is because maybe whenever we try to you know lay out those boxes sometime what will happen is that the height of the container the height of the container will be only about this much only and we'll try to give some vertical space we'll try to give some horizontal space so if the height is that much only how can you give extra space you cannot give any extra space right agar aapke paas height hi sirf itni hai to how will you give an extra space if you don't have any 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 space left in the container so in order to give space you need to have the complete height so that is what i have given and I have also given a background color so that I get to know that the complete colored area is the area that I have for my flex boxes. And I can easily lay out all these boxes in any part of the container, in any part of this colored area. Now, Secondly, I've given a common style of height and width equals to 100, plus, uh, 100 pixel. And I added this in item class. So wherever I will use this item class, they will have height and width. Similarly, I've added different colors for every different item because I just want to identify them uniquely. That okay, this is my item one, this is my item two, this is my item three. Now let's just talk about see uh, let's just talk about flex boxes because this is what is going to help us in understanding the further terminologies. So, in order to activate flex box, you just need to go at the container where you have laid out all the boxes. You have let the box of item, you have item one, item two, and item three. So, three items you have let out. So, what you are going to do, you are going to say display equals to flex and that's it. If you just do it, you will see a slight change that happened here that all the boxes have uh, uh, have aligned themselves in one single row now. This is what is, uh, you know, a basic basic thing which Flex has introduced. Display Flex likhne se itna change ho gaya ki sare boxes ek line mein aage. But that is also not the best part about Flexbox, right? The best part about Flexbox is about to come. And this is also happening from a Flexbox property, right? We'll talk about that. But I hope this is also making sense that flex is kuch to change hua hai. Something has changed. Now, let's just talk about some theoretical terms now. And then we'll go back to the same discussion once again. And we can have the continued discussion. So whenever we have a container, let's just again go back with the same container example. That whenever we have a container like this. And inside a container, we have two things, right? One is the direction of flow. And other thing is the main axis of the container, right? Suppose the boxes you have laid out in certain manner, your boxes you have laid out in this manner. So the direction of the flow is what? The direction of the flow is it, it is in row manner or it is in horizontal manner. So I can say this is a row direction. Flex direction is row now. And whatever is the direction of the flex now, right? Whatever way the boxes are getting arranged, right? That is called as a main axis. Main axis of, of your flex. So if you can just look at this container and the boxes, how they are laid out, can you please tell me if this is a row wise manner, if this is a horizontal manner, or if this is a vertical manner and a column wise manner? Can you please tell me that? What do you think is the flow of this thing? Uh, why given margin and padding zero? We have given margin and padding equals to zero because uh, HTML does come with some by default. HTML and CSS does come with some by default margins and paddings. If we don't give margin and padding equals to zero, there will be some space left from the left hand side, from the top, from the bottom, and from the uh, right hand side, which will not look good because when I give hundred pixel, when I give hundred vh and hundred hundred vw, it will actually give some scroll scroll bars from top and from you know vertical manner so that i don't like so that's why i've given nullified all the margins and baddings uh both uh, our classes but uh, 
yeah i think they were asking about something oh okay they, you are asking about item and item one see we have given two different classes for different purposes i have already explained right why we have why we have used it yeah it is a row wise manner right everyone knows it is a row wise manner and that itself is called as the by default the direction of the flow so let's go back here and this is what we say is the default behavior of your flex it is a default behavior right so if we have the main axis as as a uh, you know as the you know uh, as the horizontal uh, row so you know right in a plane we only have two axes right one is x axis and another one is y axis right so if the x axis is this if the x axis is called as main axis now there will be another perpendicular axis on top of it and that will be called as your what that will be called as your cross axis right it will be always perpendicular to it and you know the only perpendicular to your vertical line the only perpendicular to your horizontal line will be a vertical line only that's it. we are talking about a 2d plane so that is about it right that is about how a main axis looks like and how does a cross axis looks like let me just you know please ask this one more question to you that if i have this as a container now and if i have the direction of flow of the boxes coming like this way the boxes are getting arranged in this manner so what do you think is the direction of flow of the flex for me if this is the direction of flow yes or no yes and that is a column wise manner right that is a direction of the flow is column and is it the main axis or is it still the cross axis because i think maybe uh, the vertical line should always be called as a cross axis do you think no it will still be called as a main axis and you might have just understood one thing that whenever wherever is the direction of flow of the box is going that is the direction that is the main axis if the boxes are getting arranged automatically in the uh, row wise manner the row wise manner or the horizontal line will become your main axis if the boxes are arranging in a vertical line then vertical line will become your main axis it's not that that main axis is always a horizontal or main axis is, al is always the vertical line it always depends upon what is the direction of the flow of the items or direction of the flow of the containers does that point make sense and additional to this the perpendicular line here will become your vertical axis or will it becomes your sorry cross axis this i hope that is making sense exactly 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 everyone got it please explain uh it how justify i am about to explain it i am just about to explain it right gap and everything i'll just explain let me first of all complete with this thing so ab ye cheez humne flex ka main and ye cheeze dekh liye if this is very very clear let's just first of all experiment around with this direction property and let's just say that if i say flex direction equals to row what what change will it make to the flex does it make will it make any change no it will not make any change because by default the direction of flow was row only so that is the row direction that's not at all a problem if i say that it has to be column now will it make any difference here yes it will make the difference and the box will align it themselves in a vertical row in in a, in a vertical line one above the other this is the first two differences we have seen row and a column display although we have things like column reverse and row reverse we will talk about that later but two basic difference we have seen row and a column now let's just do it back to row right and let's just try to understand that maybe what if i want to maintain equidistance of these boxes now maybe i want to place these boxes in such a manner in such a manner equidistance from each other how will i be able to do that in order to do that there are two properties and the property name goes something like this the property goes like this there is a property called as justify sorry there is a property goes by the name of justify content and it always always it works on how can i increase the font it was already uh, excel only but yeah there is always a property of uh, justify content and justify content always works on the main axis if the main axis is horizontal line justify content is going to work on the horizontal line if the main axis is vertical line it is going to work on the vertical line so if you want to give space in the vertical in, in the main axis you will always have to use the justify content I'll say justify content property, right? After that, we have certain values to give, right? We can give a value of flex start. Let's start with flex start value, right? Flex start value will mean that how you want to plan things in a vertical manner. If you want to place all the items in the starting of your box, 
If you want that, what will you do? You will say flex start. All the items of your row has been put on the start of your line, has been put on the start of your row. That means the justify content has been put into flex start. What if I want to put all the boxes at the end? I can simply say flex end. And now you will be able to see all the boxes of your horizontal line are now placed on the end or the you know on the right hand side of your line. That is what flex end will mean for you. Other property that we use is called as center. That's it. Center will place all the box at what? Obviously, at the center of your page. That's it. Center of your not the page, but center of your main axis. Main axis is this horizontal line, right? So in your horizontal line, if you try to measure it from the this line to this first border of the blue box, you'll see that this is exact same difference, which is the difference between this last line of the cadet blue to this ending of the you know of the of this page. That is how center flex start and flex end will you know align the box accordingly. I hope these three properties are totally totally clear to you, and you don't have any confusion with it. That's good, right? Now, if this is clear, let's talk about something interesting. Let's talk about something juicy. The juicy part about it is you can still use other three important properties which are very commonly used. The first property that we use is something called as space around, space equally and space between. They are almost equal to each other. Space around will mean that there will be space from left and right side also, but there will be slightly left, slightly less space from the different side, but there will be equal spaces from within the boxes. Can you see that there is some space from left and right side, but the space from left and right is slightly less if you compare with the space that is between these boxes. You can clearly see that, right? The space between this is less if you compare it with this. This is what space around will do for you. The other property is what if you want equi space from all the ends? You want equal space from left, right? You want equal space between the boxes. So to achieve that, you can say space evenly. Say space evenly. Now you will be able to see that if there is equal space from left hand side to the blue box, then between the blue box to this orange -ish box or to tomato -ish box, and same and so and so forth. I hope this is also very, very clear. Other thing is about space between, right? Space between will simply say that it will give equal space in between and there will be no space from around the corners. There is no space from around the corners and then there is equal space between the boxes. So these are three different, uh, you know, uh, what is it? These are three different properties and uh, these are three different values uh, that you can give to justify content. I mean, one of the three important properties that you can choose. Many people will still have a confusion that, okay, what was the difference between space evenly? What was the difference between space around and space between? The borderline situation is you don't need to cram the difference. You can just try using space between. <clears throat> you can use uh, space around, you can use space evenly. And you can see yourself that, okay, space evenly is doing this, space between is doing that, and space between or space around is doing this. You just need to have a clarity that, okay, there are three, four properties that I can use. And justify content is something that I can use it on. And that will help me to, you know, give some spaces from left side, from right side, or between the boxes. That you don't need to stress upon property You just need to understand some raw properties, some rough properties. That's it. That is what we have just seen. Space around will give the space from left and right side also. And that space will be slightly less if you compare it with the space that is between the containers, between the items of the flex yes it means uh star main access justify content and yes it simply means that uh if the main access is the uh i mean for the main access we always use justify content and for the cross access we always use align items let's just talk about that also let's just talk about that also so let's just say that we have position our boxes very well enough in the, or we have position our boxes in all the position in the horizontal manner. When we have horizontal line, we have place kar diya, so, right? Left, mein, right, mein, center, mein, space, deke, every, everywhere we have tried to place it. Now, let's just see that what will happen and how we can do that, that if we want to place these boxes in the vertical line also. Right now, can we also place these boxes in the vertical line? Can we also arrange it in the vertical line? Yes, we can do it. And for that, we always use this property of align items. For your main axis, we use justify content. 
and for your cross axis what we use we use aligner terms align in terms is the property that we use for our cross axis right so we say align items and we say three four main properties we'll start we'll start by saying something like flex start right flex start will place at what at the starting of your vertical axis the vertical axis start from top and it goes all the till all the way till down the horizontal axis start from left and it goes all the way till right so flex start will mean that on top your in to, on top of your vertical line if i say flex end where will the box be placed can you guess flex end likhunga to kahan place hoga box the box will place at the end that's it that's it. that's how it works right that's really good we have placed it what if i want to place at the center can i say center yes i can say center and now it is at the center of your vertically center of your pitch you know? exactly exactly that is how it works now we don't have properties like uh, justify uh, we don't have properties like space between space around and this and that with the align items because that is that literally does not make sense because matlab aap i think ye logically agar aap samjhoge to aapko samajh mein aa hi jayega that agar aapne uh, you know sare boxes ko ek एक दूसरे डायरेक्शन में प्लेस किया है सो हाउ वुड यू बी प्लेसिंग या हाउ वुड यू बी एबल टू प्लेस व्हाट यू से हाउ वुड यू बी एबल टू यू नो गिव अ डिफरेंस गिव अ डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दैट इफ यू वांट टू गिव अ डिस्टेंस बिटवीन सच सिचुएशंस लेट मी शो यू इफ यू हैव दिस लाइक इफ यू हैव अ स्ट्रक्चर लाइक दिस एंड यू वांट टू गिव स्पेसेस बिटवीन दस बॉक्सेस एंड एक्सेट्रा वी विल टॉक अबाउट दैट लेटर फॉर दैट वी हैव टू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टॉक अबाउट व्हाट यू से नाउ वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट द रैपिंग राइट फ्लेक्स रैप वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट that how does wrapping works in uh, flex boxes and how we can utilize and how we can create a structure like this so let's just talk about that example once again right let's just say that we have more boxes now and we have more boxes and let's just say we have uh, item number 1 item number 2 and item number 3 once again so if we say so you can see um, what happened yeah now does it, that does look like a good one So let's just say that if I have, let's just not use this align item property. Let's just say, yeah, if I have all those boxes like this, and if I try to inspect it, and if I try to shorten the screen, if I just try to, you know, shrink the screen slightly a bit, can you see? It? I'm trying to shrink the screen now, and obviously the space will decrease between the boxes. The space between the boxes is getting decreased. If I increase the uh, space, the boxes ka space will also increase. That's a good thing. But what if I have? Uh, I don't want to make those boxes that crumbled up. I want to say that maybe if the space is too less, you should try moving to the next line. You should just release this row and you just should move to the next line, right? If space is too much, then you should go to the next room. Pe chale jana right? You should just go to the next room. See, if you want to give desired space between the boxes, then first thing is maybe you can talk about gap. राइट आप गैप से बीच में दे सकते हो वो यू नो मार्जिन और वो चीजें करके दे सकते हो बट दैट्स नॉट समथिंग दैट यू वुड रिकमेंड कि आप हर किसी में अलग अलग स्पेस दो फ्लेक्स बॉक्सेस आर जनरली मेड इन सच अवे दैट यू हैव यू नो अ कंट्रोल यू यू गिव अ यूनिफाइड स्पेस मेजर्ड स्पेस एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली ना इफ आई वॉन्ट टू डू समथिंग लाइक दिस फॉर दैट वॉट वी हैव टू यूज यू हैव टू यूज समथिंग लाइक अ फ्लेक्स प्रॉपर्टी एंड द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ फ्लेक्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लेवरेज हेयर इज is is your flex wrap and for that there are two properties right there is two important properties one is no wrap and the other is wrap no wrap will mean that there will be no wrapping happening matlab everything will still come in the same line there will be no new line allotted to it but when i say wrap wrap will mean that there will be the wrapping happening on the next line and if the space is too less right the elements will quickly move to the next row this is how it will happen right can you see it After hundred hundred pixel, there was very small space left in here, so that's why the box was shifted to the was shifted to the next line. If I'll even crumble it down, if I'll even crumble it down, the next box will even shift to the new line. If I'll even crum crumble it down, the next box will even shift to the next line. That is how wrapping works in Flex, right? This is how wrapping works in Flex. I hope wrapping is very very clear to you now, and you got to know how. you can maintain the gaps and how you can have this particular thing and how you can have a structure like this right okay if you have talked about wrap if you have talked about uh, you know what do you say uh, flex direction if you have talked about justify content if you have talked about align items right 
other things like there is something called as how to reduce between boxes and you how to reduce gap between boxes uh so for that maybe there is there must be a property i'll have to check first of all let me just show you there there are certain blocks and something before even showing about blocks before even talking about other properties which you are interested into gap which are interested about other properties let me just talk about something called as flexbox problem yeah this one. this is a very cool resource right uh, that i always always uh you know that i always suggest people to go through yeah so this is a problem that you can just go through once right let me share it with you all just go through this one and the challenge that you have here is that uh, you have these frogs you have these different frogs and you want to place the frog at the correct position and the correct position of a frog is the lily pad right or this lily leaf whatever it is and maybe you'll have multiple frogs of different colors and you'll also have the same lily pads of the same color so the the correct solution will happen once you put the right frog on the right lily pad the code that you can see on the left hand side is something which is written incomplete there is one item in the flex you want to place it at this particular position you want to place this box you want to place this frog on the very extreme right side of the uh, of this leaf so what property of flex uh, sh you should use what property of you know justify content what property of align item what value of align item or what value of justify content you should use to place this frog at its correct position do you have any idea what you should use yeah exactly flex end is the property that we should use because right now the direction of the flow is what the direction of the flow is row why only row because there is no direction specified and whenever no direction is specified that simply means it is a row direction so i should do what i should simply say uh justify content justify content and it should be equal to uh flex end and if i just say so what happened can you see the frog has been successfully placed on the lily pad and that's how uh, you know we have successfully completed the level if we move to the next level we should be able to move to the next level and now we have a slightly different problem and the problem says that this is a position of frogs and this is the position of lily pads we want to place these frogs frogs on this correct lily pads so how will we place those frogs on the lily pads exactly we will we'll again use the same property of justify content and the value we will give is center because it looks like a center to me and as soon as i do this the frogs are collect, uh, correctly placed there the next position you will see is again right it looks like very intuitive that if this is the position of lily pads and this is the position of frogs how will we place those frogs on lily pads what position should we use i think we should use something like space around this time and we should say justify content and that should be equal to space uh what space between or oh, sorry space around and if i write this the frogs are successfully placed at the current position right the same thing is happening here right uh, this time i think space between should do the job right and not this space uh, evenly let's just say space justify content equals to space uh, between and that's it right that has done the job for us so you can see that I've just gone through four or five levels and I know enough of the CS justify content property now. Similarly, you can go through those 23, 24 levels at least, right? And you'll have a very good idea about basic properties of wrap, basic property of justify content, basic properties of align items and all the basic, basic properties about flex, which you need at most, right? I'll also share one uh, or two resource with you of CSS flex boxes in which uh, CSS flex boxes, all the major properties which are used on a daily basis will be written and you can just go through that and it's a very interactive block i don't want to discuss all the properties in the current class because first is that you don't have to learn all the properties you can just go with the basic things and the other properties you can just go by looking at the examples and looking at the demonstration of how these properties works So any problems with align items, any problems with wrap, any problems with this, uh, you know, justify content?
clear perfect so if that is clear then right we can talk about other properties right that i'll share a blog with you right please 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 go through that blog and if you find any confusion with that blog and any any problems any properties you are not able to make sense please you know ask that in the next class and we'll have a discussion on that that's the first point now if this is clear right we are trying to move towards something better than this right we are we are going to move something uh you know advanced than this which is about grid and don't worry i'll not talk about grids yeah I'll, I'll not talk about grids completely in this class because grid is something which is uh you know considered to be not a good practice just uh to start for a beginner right because for beginners nobody will uh, you know expect you to know all the grids and i myself have not used grid very much in my uh you know in my what do you say uh, in in my uh, css whatever i've written why because almost everything that you will do with grid is somehow achievable using flex boxes so aap jo grid se karna chahte ho wo kisi na kisi tarike se aap flex se bhi kar hi loge and grid just to start as a beginner is more challenging there are more properties like that i'll just tell you one example of grid how does it work and i'll just try to you know maybe play around with doing some things some examples on grids let's see how uh, that goes if you are able to understand it that's good i'll just show you an example right make bas aapko example dikhana chahta hu i don't want all of you to please focus. i i want all of you to just take it as an optional lecture just take it as an optional stuff ki aap assume karo ye kuch optional hum discussion kar rahe hain taki aapko pata rahe ki grid dikhta kaise right so just to take that discussion i'll do one thing for you i'll say suppose i want to do i want to create thing I want to create a page which looks something like this. A page has certain content, and a page has content like this. An element like item one, uh, another item like item two, uh, item three, item four, and item five. This is the layout that I want to create. I want to have five different elements on my page, and all those elements should look something like this. One element should cover the complete. um you know should cover the complete uh, height and width etc the complete width then second element should come from this way third and fourth and fifth if i want you to create a layout like this can you create this natively using uh, you know those division and position etc etc you could have created it but it will be a lot of work so what i'm going to do by writing 3 4 5 or 10 20 line of css using css grids i'll try to create this design just let let's just give me one minute and i'll simply say grid dot html please take it as an optional lecture i'm saying again and again please don't bother that what we have written and how what we have done uh let's just say grid dot yes and i'll borrow the same stuff from my flex dot html I'll, i'll borrow the same design from here same these divisions from here and i'll also borrow the same css from flex box this and i'll obviously move, make the changes i'll just remove these from here and i'll say and also not add this height and width i don't need it right and i'll say just one second i'll not open it i'll directly open the grid one perfect in this what i want to do i want to have let's just assume how many columns i have let's just see how many rows i have i am thinking that i have three columns column number 1 column number 2 column number 3 so three columns i have and i do have three rows also this is row number 1 this is row number 2 this is row number 3 so i'll say that i'll have the display equals to uh, grid that's what then i will decide how many rows and how many columns i'm going to have So I'm going to have three rows and three columns. So I'll say grid template rows, and I will have uh, three columns. And three columns are equidistance. Uh, sorry, three rows are equidistance. So let's just say this is equidistance. This is equidistance. This is equidistance. So let's just say three rows. So I'll say one fr, one fr, and one fr. Or I could have said three. Repeat one fr three, three one fr whatever. And this should also do the job. But let's just do it. Then I also have three columns here. So I'll say template columns. and i think my first column uh, is one third or it's something like uh, you know uh, yeah one third or one half of the other ones so let's just say that if my one if my first column is one fr the other columns are three fr and three fr so let's just say that so this is how i have just decided the template of how my rows and how my columns are going to look like
once i've decided the columns and once i've decided it it does not look what i wanted to create ye abhi waisa nahi lag raha hai jaisa mujhe create karna tha i'll create it what i wanted to uh, do but we have roughly created a structure what do i do to what do i have to do next is i have to say that what is the starting pointer of my first item it is starting from what end and it is ending at what end right what is the starting column what is the ending column what is the starting row what is the ending column what is the ending row so to do that i better use i i generally like to use this one and i say that my first item is spanning from 1 till minus 4 So I can say my item number one should be spanning grid row start or grid column start. Where is it? Grid column start should be starting from one, and it should be going to uh, grid column end, and it should be going to what? It should be going to four, I believe. Yeah, it should be going to four. So if I just do this, can you see it? It has started from this and it has ended at this. It does not look good. I know. I, I can also change it. Uh, for the column side, I can say grid row start, and the row should start from one, and the row should end at what? Grid row end. Grid row end. Where is it? Row end. Yeah. The end should be. The end should be two. So I should say two. And if I do this, can you see? It? We are slightly going where I wanted to go, right? I'm slowly, slowly, where I wanted to go, where I wanted to go. I just wanted to have a header like this. So this is what I have done, right? The complete blue area is this. This, this this is a complete blue area right that looks like a complete good example to me let's just say that maine na yahan pe ek gadbad kar rakhi hai ki maine bahut sare item 1 item 2 item 3 bana rakhe hain so let's just say item 4 hai ye aur ye item 5 hai sakte hain let's just do this item 4 should have a different color it should have a color like uh, sorry it should have a color like uh something like this chocolate color and then this should also have a different color and the color should be the steel color and let's just do it now you'll still see the blue color is covered now right that's perfect uh oh shit i'm doing these changes that sorry 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 i should have done this in the grid yeah oh, right so yeah i just done this <laughs> sorry oh so sorry so item 1 is done now for item 2 what i'll do i'll say item 2 should have a starting from this and should have an end at this and the column should also uh, start accordingly so i should say that item 2 should have a start let me just borrow it Trust me, guys. I'm telling you, this is just a demonstration that I'm doing, just to tell you the powers of grid, right? I'm not uh, expecting that you guys are able to understand all of this. It is just for demonstration purpose. Please don't take it very, very seriously, right? Uh, FR simply says fractional ratio. I mean, if you want to divide the whole width in equal distance, then you'll say FR. So when I say one FR, 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 means that if you have a complete row, please give equal distance of one ratio, one ratio, one ratio to this. If I say one FR, three FR, three FR, that means one ratio give to the first column, third one is to three ratio give to the second column, and one is to three ratio give to the third column. Yes, exactly. So I'll just go here and I'll just try to say quickly. I'll just try to wrap it up. Second item that I want to do, uh, the start should uh, uh, the column should start from one itself. Let's just go back here. Uh, the column should start from uh, you know one and it should cover up till two. That's good. Uh, one and the column should at, uh, end at two. The start should start from two, uh, and it should all the way go till four. So it go till four, and that's how you can see the second column is also sorted, right? First is sorted, second is sorted, right? पहले में blue आना चाहिए था, दूसरे में ऐसा आना चाहिए था. That is also sorted. हम चाहे तो three F R नहीं करते हैं, इसको two F R two F R कर देते हैं, ये ज़्यादा better रहेगा. Two F R two F R कर देते हैं. इसलिए तो बहुत ही ज़्यादा चौड़ा हो रहा था. Now that looks good. So yeah, we have done this, and the next thing that I want to do is I want to do the same things for third and fourth and fifth column. So Ari, I'll just quickly do it. Uh, the second column, uh, the third item should start from uh, this and till go go till this. So it should start from two and it should go till third. So I should say it the column should start from two and it should go till three. Uh, the row should start from two and it should go till three. 
so that is also sorted the you can see the third is also sorted fourth is automatically sorted anyways but still let's write it for four uh four ko likh dete hain let's do it for four only four should start from column should start from what uh it should start from three and it should go for four and the, the row still looks fine let's just do the last one let's just, just do the last fifth one and it should be done for us okay last one ke liye apne ko kya karna hai last one ke liye apne ko start yahan se karna hai and it should go till here so we should say uh sorry we should say that it should start from uh, Three and it should go till four. So the column should start from uh, three. Uh, sorry, the column should start from two, and it should. Uh, what you done? Yeah, the column should start from two, right? Huh? Two and it should go till four. So two to four we have given, and the row should start from uh, the row should start from three and it should go till four. So three and if I try to four. and that's it that's how it's done right so let me just show you once again right and look at this right and just try to compare it with what we have drawn here right we have drawn this this is created right we have just drawn this line this is now created then we have created 3 4 box 3 4 is created and then we have created 5 5 is created right so isn't this very very obvious isn't this very very awesome right we have created a very complex layout within a fraction of second not a fraction of second at least but within a fraction of minutes and that was all possible with the You know, grids. अगर आप इसमें बहुत ज्यादा दिमाग लगाओगे तो ये सारी चीजें आप फ्लेक्स बॉक्सेस से भी कर पाओगे ऑल ऑफ दिस यूल बी एबल टू डू दिस फ्लेक्स बॉक्स बट फॉर दैट यू हैल्टी मल्टीपल कंटेनर यूजिंग ग्रिड्स आई जस्ट क्रिएटेड इन इट विद वन कंटेनर आई एम रिपीटिंग दिस अगेन एंड अगेन गाइज प्लस प्लीज डोंट अज्यूम दैट दैट ऑल ऑफ दिस शुड मेक सेंस टू यू आई एम जस्ट गिविंग यू एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ हाउ टू वर्क विद ग्रिड्स अंटिल एंड अनलेस यू हैव you know mastered css unless until and unless you have gone through all the major major parts of css nobody is going to ask you about grids directly people don't recommend using grids so that was just an optional lecture uh, that was just an optional stuff uh, that i've uh, taught you don't get overwhelmed with this but please try to focus much on flex boxes now once you are very very well, well versed with flex boxes you can then talk about grids Yes, you can do the same thing with flex box also. अच्छा ये challenge करते हैं. Let's let's do this uh, sort of an assignment. Let's see that if with whatever knowledge of flex box you possess, will you be able to replicate the same example with flex box? Yes or not? मतलब अगर बहुत सारे flex box आप बनाओगे तो उस हिसाब से आप ये वाला same चीज flex box से भी कर पाओगे. ठीक है. Let's just see if you are able to if you are capable enough of doing that. The best practice, obviously, I mean, in industry you hardly will get you will hardly ever get this type of complex designs. right you will get some simpler designs and you when we have simpler designs we can simply use flex boxes so simpler design mein the flex boxes seedha hi use kar sakte hain exactly so that is how it works uh, i hope you have got a good idea of flex boxes now at least a introduction of flex boxes you might have got I'll also share another uh, resource, as I've told. I will share that resource with you. You You can go go through through that blog. It's beautifully written. And And uh, once you go through it, please try to implement some of the flex boxes things here. And, uh, we will take those questions in the next class, where we'll continue this discussion. So, any questions you have before, you know, if I, before I conclude the class, you can quickly ask that in the chats. Or else, I think that should be the end of the class. In complex design, you can use grids, but just try to. You know, see कि अगर आप उसको flex box से ही कर सकते हो तो flex box से ही कर लो. Grid को unnecessarily use करना भी मतलब इतना preferred नहीं होता है. Unless and until you are very very well versed with grid. अगर आपको बहुत अच्छे से grid आता है तो आप मस्त आराम से लगाओ. But होता क्या है कि बहुत लोगों को grid इतनी जल्दी समझ नहीं आता है. So that's why people don't recommend कि फालतू में उल्टा पुल्टा grid लगाने से तो मत ही लगाओ. Okay, perfect. So uh, I think with this thing we can conclude the discussion now. सीएसएस यूनिट्स में क्या कंफ्यूजन है यार मैंने इसको क्लियर कर दिया था आई क्लियर इट आउट ऑलरेडी ना मे बी इफ इफ देयर इज स्टिल अ कंफ्यूजन रिमेनिंग यू नो दैट देयर आर डाउट क्लासेस हैपनिंग सो यू कैन नाउ आस्क दोस डाउट स्पेसिफिकली इन द इन द डाउट क्लास आल्सो एंड इट शुड बी क्लियर परफेक्ट सो लेट मी कंक्लूड द रिकॉर्डिंग्स